Marty Michalski's family devotionals are a big hit with many homeschool families. My family in particular has read and enjoyed the ology as well as his book about the Psalms. In fact, I had Pastor Michalski on the podcast in a previous episode to talk all about his book about the Psalms for children, so you're going to want to be sure to check that out. Well, Marty Michalski has written a new book called The Light Before Christmas, and it's a family Advent devotional. In this four-week Advent family devotional, he combines the devotions on the theme of light and darkness with the story of 11-year-old Mia and her grandmother as they prepare for Christmas. Grandma loves to share her faith, especially at Christmas time, and although she is blind, she can see the light of Jesus shining bright and helps Mia and children of all ages to do the same. Every year, Mia loves to spend the month of December with Grandma getting ready for Christmas. This year, they read a special devotional, The Light Before Christmas, together. Michalski brings families into their devotional time sharing the story of Christmas. Through a Bible study of light and darkness, readers will discover how the theme of light weaves its way through the Christmas story and God's plan of salvation. The Light Before Christmas contains 13 devotionals, three for each of the four weeks of Advent and one more for Christmas. Each devotional includes a scripture for the day, an object lesson, a question to discuss as a family, a song to sing together, and a prayer. Keep listening in for this special bonus Advent audio blog where Marty Michalski will read you an excerpt from this new devotional. And check the show notes to find out more details about this new book and how you can get a copy for your family. The Light Before Christmas, Chapter 1, A Visit with Grandma. Just like on Christmases past, the little brick church on Maple Avenue was packed shoulder to shoulder with people. Joyful voices sang out, spilling into the streets and through the neighborhood. Long robes swayed as the choir danced and clapped their hands to the beat. Children and adults joined together in singing the season's first Christmas carols, welcoming the town to listen and sing along. Together they sang the words, I once lived in darkness, deep as the night. Then God sent his Spirit to open my eyes. The light of the world gave me back my sight. All heaven rejoiced when I saw the light. Shout joyful tidings, salvation has come. The light of Christmas in Bethlehem born. The babe in a manger is God's only son. Good news of great joy. He is Christ the Lord. Inside the sanctuary, on a wooden pew, sat 11-year-old Mia with her grandmother. She was spending the entire month of December helping her grandma prepare for Christmas. Mia loved her grandmother very much and looked forward to their time together all year long. She was thrilled to leave her home in the south to enjoy the brisk, snowy mountains. Today was the first Sunday of Advent, and in several weeks, Mia's parents would join them for Christmas. As she listened to the melodious chorus of carols, she began humming along. Everything felt warm and festive until she noticed tears on Grandma's face. Mia listened more closely to the words of the song and realized it was about seeing the light and of sight being restored. How could they be so insensitive to Grandma's blindness, thought Mia. It's no wonder she's crying. Mia put her arm around Grandma and hugged her gently. She was relieved when the song finally ended and especially eager to walk back home for lunch. She tried to be patient while her grandmother greeted nearly every person in the church. When they finally stepped outside, the bright sun forced Mia to squint. A warm glow shone on their faces and the snow crunched under their boots. Mia's thick braids bobbed and bounced in the brisk air as she walked to the beat of Grandma's long white and red cane tapping the sidewalk ahead. Though Grandma couldn't see the road before her, she knew exactly where they were going. But Mia wished her grandmother could appreciate the beautiful scene. Grandma, said Mia, the town is all decorated for Christmas. The trees are covered in snow. It's all so beautiful. Yes. This is Dr. Jones's place, Grandma replied. He always decorates his white fence with red ribbons, and they match the cardinal at his feeder. The spry woman lifted her cane and pointed right at the bird. Mia was astonished. How did you know that, Grandma? I heard the flutter of his wings and the chirp of his call, 
she answered. You can always tell a cardinal. I just guessed it was a bright red male to match the ribbon. Was I right? Yes, Mia answered. But how did you know this was Dr. Jones's place? I count the steps. It's 62 paces from the church to Doc's place. He's been hanging red ribbons on his fence since before you were born. It's one of his Christmas traditions. Then the cardinal danced on the branch of the pine, dusted the fence with snow, and called out a sharp, high-pitched tweet. Cardinals must be so beautiful, Grandma remarked. Everyone seems so excited to see them, especially in the snow. Mia wished Grandma could see. Then she remembered the song and Grandma's tears. I'm sorry about that song at the church, said Mia. They should have known it would hurt your feelings. Oh, I wasn't sad, dear. I actually love that song, replied Grandma. Pastor Jake knows it's one of my favorite carols. Those were happy tears. Mia pulled away, shocked. But Grandma, she exclaimed, the whole song is about being blind. How could that possibly make you happy? I might be blind on the outside, but inside I can see. Grandma paused. She lifted her cane and pointed it right at the sun. I might not be able to see the sun with my eyes, but I can feel its rays on my face. See how I can point it out to you? Mia nodded. Uh-huh. Light is that strong, my dear. When sighted folk look up toward that sun, the brightness blinds them, forces you all to close your eyes. But we all stand blind before the light, and there's no better season to celebrate the coming of God's light than at Christmas time. In the Bible, the prophet Isaiah says that all people walk in darkness until they see a great light, until a new light has dawned. I'm not sure I understand, replied Mia. Grandma smiled. Even though I was born blind, God opened the eyes of my heart to see him. While I might not be able to see the beautiful pine trees and the ribbons on the fence, I can see God and experience his light. Mia still didn't quite understand, but she was relieved that Grandma was no longer crying. Grandma then took Mia's hand and said, I have a present for you, a special book. I want us to read it together to celebrate Advent. You can open it after lunch. Mia beamed, for she loved opening presents. But Grandma, she asked, how are you going to read a book to me? Is it written in Braille? Is that why it's special? Actually, you're going to read it to me, said Grandma. We'll enjoy it together, like I did with my father when I was your age, back when I was double blind. Double blind? Mia asked, for she had never heard that term before. Yes, dear. I was blind on the outside and the inside. You see, inside we're all born blind. The eyes of our heart are blind with sin. But once God shines his light into our hearts, we can see. It was in listening to Daddy read that book that God opened my eyes to first see the light. Intrigued, Mia asked, What's the book called? You'll have to wait till after lunch, smiled Grandma. And she led the way home up the snow-covered path. The two said nothing more. As they neared the house, Grandma tapped her cane on the front porch and lifted her foot right in time to take the first step up. It was as though her grandmother could see the steps in front of her. The weathered cedar planks filled the front porch with the familiar smell of Grandma's house, even in the cold. Mia stepped forward and pulled open the wooden screen door. The long spring screwed to the door broke the silence as it creaked and sounded their arrival. Grandma passed Mia the key, which she inserted into the center of the knob and turned, giving the door a shove. A burst of warm air greeted them as the two came in out of the cold. Mia took in a deep breath. She loved the smell of Grandma's house. Inside, Mia helped set the table for lunch. As she did, her grandmother looked up and offered a silent prayer to heaven. Mia was so busy with the dishes, she didn't notice another tear rolled down her grandmother's wrinkled cheek. After lunch, Grandma invited Mia to open her present. They would read it together while enjoying a slice of apple pie. 
Grandma baked a pie each Saturday afternoon, and Mia loved her pies. She wondered which would be better, the pie or the book. She noticed the book sitting nearby, wrapped in red paper with white snowflakes. Mia wasted no time. She tore right through the wrapping paper and read aloud the book's title, The Light Before Christmas, the elegant letters surrounding an image of a beautiful starburst. Mia gave her grandmother a big hug. Thank you, Grandma, she said. I can't wait to begin. Grandma laughed. Well, go on. Let's do it. Mia flipped eagerly past the first few pages until she reached chapter one. She snuggled in close to Grandma and proceeded to read. Thank you to this week's special audio blog guest. Be sure to check the show notes to find out more about this week's guest and where you can find all the resources discussed in this episode. And would you take a moment to leave a rating and review and to subscribe to the Homeschool Conversations with Humility and Doxology podcast? You can do that right here, wherever you're listening to your podcast. It really is a great way to let other homeschool families find the homeschooling encouragement that you get delivered straight to your earbuds each week. I am busy recording more scintillating podcast content for you for the future season, but for now, make sure you don't miss a single bonus episode. Until next time, my friends.